I don't know how aware you guys are of this, but nothing beats drinking a fine coffee with some corn. Seriously, corn is absolutely delicious. You know what else is absolutely delicious? The new flavor that Novgorod has, because these boyos got massively buffed now with the unique new government reform, access to the estates. So before you didn't have the estates as republics, right? Now you have the estates and the faction, so you get double the bonuses now. Plus the new republican reforms make a massive difference. Forming the Russian Empire as Novgorod pretty much is the best choice right now because you're gonna get stronger both economically and militarily so initially we have a pretty weakened out situation not gonna lie the muscovites are gonna kick our ass unless we play our cards right remember that we have significantly less troops than them and because the ai is a lot more aggressive now in the recent update what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for them to attack us whilst we're waiting for them to attack us we're gonna get our claim on tver and we're gonna try and um kill tver before the muscovites kill us or before they even kill tver you never know, they might gun for Tiver themselves. We're gonna try and get an alliance with Riazan also. A lot of the times, if we do not ally them in the first couple of days, Muscovy will. Don't forget to get your rivals as well. Tiver, Livonian Order, and of course, uh, Lithuania. We're gonna get the Muscovites as our rival after we've killed off Tiver. And when it comes to the estates, pretty standard estate run with the, the plus one mana privileges. Get your agenda as well and uh, seize crownlands afterwards. We can also give out the uh, private trade fleets since we are a naval power, kind of, not really, well, you know, semi-naval power, let's call it. Patronage of the Arts for the extra prestige. I actually strongly recommend you uh, split up your heavy ships and you sell them off. You don't really need a fleet in the early game, and the money that you get from selling your ships is gonna help you out in the initial couple of wars. You also wanna get the burgers loans, which are 1% loans that will help out a lot in the early part of the game, and in return, we only pay 0.27 interest, which is close to nothing, realistically speaking. For some strange reason, Reason, a lot of the times you can ally the Scots do it because if the Muscovites attack you well the Scots are gonna help you out They will come with their units and they have quite a few units to be fair Hiring the free company early on is also a pretty good idea This way you get some time to actually get their morale up because you never know when the Muscovites might attack They might do it after the war with Tver. They might do it before the war with Tver. So just in case you want to make sure your armies do have the morale that they need So they don't get instantly stack wiped and speaking of stack wipes I'm gonna show you guys how you can get some easy stack wipes as we go along in this first war because the mechanics for that have been changed with the recent update and it's a lot easier to get stack wipes now and there goes the last of our ships now the thing is guys we're gonna replace all of the ships that we sold with light ships and we're gonna make sure that these light ships protect trade in the Novgorod node however I need the money for now for the initial war against the Muscovites so I'll be getting these light ships after the war with the Muscovites after the first war with the Muscovites there's gonna be a few of them Shinoki and make sure we send the uh, free company to siege down their capital and the other army we're gonna be shipping on over to kill their units and uh, siege the rest because we want to make sure we're gonna stack wipe the entire army we're gonna leave 1,000 units behind and we're gonna attack with the rest of our army including the free company the enemy army in uh, cashier and then they get stack wiped as consequence there you go now we don't need to worry about them anymore and because the mercenaries have their own manpower pool it does not matter if we lose their manpower while they siege down the fort. That's why you always want to prioritize sieging fortifications with mercenary units rather than with your main troops, especially in the early game. A Vicklesegius to Vericus is over. So here's two things you can do now, right? You can obviously fully annex them and that's gonna be the most beneficial in the long run in my opinion and I personally will fully annex them. You also have the option of making them a vassal. They also have their own capital fort here so it would be one more fort for the Muscovites to siege before they get to your lands essentially and if you do decide to vassalize them it's actually better to keep their army alive rather than stack wipe them i don't want to go down that path because i hate integrating vassals i find it the most annoying thing ever especially in this area where i'm not going to be going for any vassal specific ideas or anything of the sorts plus i personally think that in the early game as novgorod you really need as much development as possible that's also why i'm not concentrating development in these provinces we also gained 1% crownlands from annexing the lands of Tiver because they nerfed the schnapps out of the amount of crownlands that you gain now through war. It's kind of like, uh, 
their way of uh, nerfing down the fact that people used to get 5 to 10 percent crownlands from annexing another country. Makes sense to be fair. Another reason why you should annex Tver is because you're gonna get up to 150 development and once your country has 150 or above development you can recruit the free independent and the grand company again. So there you go we can recruit the grand company, free company and so on. Even though we already have one free company we can get a second one and the other two as well whenever we need them in the future wars. And in the first war, we want to get back these four provinces. We have cores on these, and after we get them back, we can get claims on the entirety of Muscovy. All of the Muscovite lands we get permanent claims on. You're likely going to get the Civil War in Novgorod event early on, so support the Mercantile faction because you want the extra Mercantilism. Eventually, you're going to get a massive amount of Mercantilism from your mission tree, which adds about like 15 or 17 extra Mercantilism altogether. And as a merchant republic, that's one thing you definitely want to have the higher the better because we had a military advisor and we also focused on getting military power we managed to become the first nation in our run to get military tech 4 which is really going to help against the muscovites because it's going to give us the morale advantage compared to their units 1449 and apparently the uh, muscovite scumbags did not attack us which means that we're going to be attacking them instead i decided to give them a good five years and now after i see 5% crownlands. This is really important because remember, it's a lot harder to actually get your crownlands back now. But since we got that back, we can attack the Muscovites now. Set our war target as Totma, which we need to get anyway. So let's go for that. And we're going to try and wipe out the uh, Puskov army first. And then we're going to regroup go around we're essentially going to be playing this defensively we're going to let the muscovites siege our provinces down and whilst they're sieging us down we're going to be gunning for the smaller armies that they have don't forget to enact a defensive edict in uh, novgorod where you have your main fortification and strap in because this is not going to be an easy war boys Buya Shaka, we killed off the Puskov army, now let's get out of here before their main army arrives here. Like I was saying, go for the small stacks, we got two 3,000 stacks that we're gonna wipe out here, whilst the main bulky armies of the Muscovites are sieging the attrition-heavy northern areas, so they're gonna lose a ton of manpower in these lands. We're gonna basically attrition them to death if we need to, to win this war. That you go, we managed to catch both of these army stacks here, so that should be an easy 6,000 units killed, we have Snoky Dose. Now let's uh, see where the other... There you go. They got another 9k in uh, three separate smaller stacks. Let's make sure that this uh, main two stacks are not going to be close by. And we're going to try and gun for those two now. Bye bye, Beluzero. Aber unze an Uda 6000 Steinski. Boy, look at this. We killed 30,000 of their units. And they only killed uh, 3,000 of ours. Well, 5,000 died to attrition. So now... They have two armies left. Whenever we see one of them is quite separate from the other one, like what's happening now, these guys are going to be sieging us down in Novgorod, whilst these guys are sieging us down in the north. We're going to attack one by one each of these stacks and kill them off. The best way to attack them is whenever they're sieging down fortifications. So this way, we get all of that bonus there. There you go. We got another 12,000 units stack wipe. And now we can take care of the last armies that they have. That's it. I guess somebody else recruited. Piskov recruited another army. All right, we're going to kill those guys after afterwards mainly we're going to focus on the muscovite army now and speaking of guys if you want to get the save game i'm going to make it available to all of my patrons and channel members also guys if you enjoy the content consider subscribing i do this full time and it really would help me out more than you can imagine just that one simple button that you click when you subscribe i'm just making this awkward aren't i i, I hate making these things awkward but they they just come out awkward okay we can get our tier 2 government reform we're going to go with the virtues of politeia which offers 10 percent national manpower Power, one of the reasons why I absolutely love the new reforms. Look at these casualties, boys. We killed 50,000 and they also lost 9,000 to attrition. And we only lost 13 with 2,000 to attrition. That's exactly what it's like when you know how the AI works and you know how to best exploit it, essentially. Well, it's not really exploiting. It's more of uh, knowing how to manage it, let's say. What happens next is the AI really recruits a lot of units to fill up that void in the land force limit. And that's why Muscovy used the up 20,000 of its manpower and recruited back its entire freaking army but most of these units are not yet merged and that is our cue to kill off one and one of these units wherever we find them before they merge up together oh dude seriously this is not the moment to get this minus one stab <laughs> never forget about the fact that you can also sortie units from 
sieges. Right now, because of the extra 2,000 units that I gained from Novgorod uh, City, I managed to win that battle without any complications. Muscovy's down to 9,000 units and 3,000 in reserve as manpower. And look at these boys. We inflicted 110,000 casualties on them with these tactics. And we only lost 35,000 on our side. We've only had to take one loan so far as well. So in the reality is I can just go ahead and get my uh, burger loans, Daria Go, and I don't have any issues with my economy whatsoever. Pay off the 4 percenter from before, and I'm only paying 0 0.30 in interest. And have a ton of cash I can use for more mercenaries if I need to, albeit this free company was actually enough. Remember that if you need a little bit of extra morale of armies, you can always get this from the aristocrats. Just spend some points and then you get these in charge of your country's guilds, which means you get 5% extra morale of armies. You can get more from the prestige as well and from your power projection. So don't forget to insult, embargo, and spit on the face of your rivals that's right you gotta spit on their face as well that's what happens in this game okay we do the spitting i just need to get the province of uh solgalitskaya and then i can peace out the russians because i they're not gonna give me the provinces i want unless i have a fortification around there all right boys we got the fort that means we can do the peace deal 80 with 73 okay i actually can take a couple more provinces so like i said i don't want a super long truce but i do want these provinces to do my mission maybe a little bit of cash to weaken the uh, Muscovite economy even further would be perfect. 1464 the truce is a-okay with me because that means we have 10 years to regain our manpower pool to consolidate the lands that we took. We also can do this mission now. Buyashnoki, look at all the permanent claim yos we got on the entirety of Muscovy and we can also focus on other wars around the Livonian lands and the Swedish lands. But remember guys, we are a merchant republic so we're gonna try to become the ultimate economic powerhouse house in this area that does not really require expansion so much as managing your country properly so we're gonna go through that a little bit and explain what it actually means one of the things that we obviously need to do is improve the amount of trade power that we get in the Novgorod node and the best way to do that is to get marketplaces built in the provinces that offer us the highest amount of trade power so that means Neva, Novgorod, Kolmogori well actually Kolmogori is in the uh, White Sea node but that's also one of our nodes so we want to improve the amount of trade power that we have there as well. Another thing obviously is that we want to build up those ships that I was talking about earlier all the way to our naval force limit. Vital thing is to lower the autonomy. Right now what we have is around 13.6 crownlands so we're getting a little bit of an autonomy debuff but we're not going to get any more after a couple of months since we're going to seize crownlands a third time and then we're going to develop a few provinces going up to 20% crownlands which means we're not getting any autonomy debuff as remember the higher your autonomy the less income and manpower you get from those provinces oh yeah Tavarian rebels kill off the muscovite wait is that like the only muscovite army left <laughs> that's it they got 9,000 units left bruh <laughs> They actually lost against the rebels. That is such a Pepega thing right there. Now, the problem is that if they're super weak, they're not super weak yet, but if they are super weak, there's a chance that the Great Horde and uh, Kazan might attack them. We don't want that to happen because we want to have separate wars with Kazan and Great Horde after we've taken out the Muscovites. Because we build the marketplace in Karmopol, we can found the city of Arkhangelsk, which gives us some extra development and dev cost reduction in that province, plus some permanent claims on the northern areas here of Laponia and Perm. Permanent claim on Perm? Okay. <laughs> I'm also culturally enriching the area here, which is Karelian and uh, Sapmi. I'm converting them essentially to Novgorodian. I am losing a lot of Diplo points, but it's 100% worth it because it's a very small culture group. And instead of wasting my uh, accepted culture slots with four or five provinces, I can use it later on after I expand into these lands. And I can set Ruthenian, Mishar, Kazani, or any of the other big groups as my accepted culture rather than just freaking Karelian. One of the things that I keep advocating in this game and in pretty much every video I've made so far is that you should mold yourself on whatever RNG you get. Don't try to completely recreate the games you see online in any videos because every single video is different and every Yi4 run is different. My case, I was about to attack the Muscovites but then I realized that they've attacked Lithuania and Lithuania is also being attacked by the Austrians so I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna attack it myself as well as the Livonians are getting attacked 
attacked by everybody, so I'm gonna attack them also. Two wars at the same time is a-okay, because I do have a pretty strong army, and I can benefit from both of these wars massively. And yes, in case you're wondering, a cow did lick my hair. That's why it looks like this right now. The problem that I have now is that the Muscovites managed to beat me to the punch here, and most likely what's gonna happen is they're gonna take these three provinces, in which case I'm not gonna be able to take anything from the Lithuanians. So if that happens, I might have to go to war with the Muscovites whilst I'm still at war with the Lithuanians. Holy mother of schnabababoob. Look at the amount of land that the Austrians just took from Poland. It's literally historical Austrian Empire borders right here. Wait a second, I just saw that Danzig actually did not break away properly from the Teutons. They lost the war. They actually had a lot of provinces and the Teutons, despite having three provinces, won that war, quite surprisingly. Oh, I think that's actually because the Austrians got involved somehow. That's probably why. Oh, actually, I think the Austrians had a separate war against the Poles, so the Poles did not join the Teutonic War. Wow, that's just medieval diplomatics in a nutshell right there. As expected, the Russians actually massively cucked me. Holy mother of God, they literally took half of freaking Lithuania, dude. What? I did not expect them to take this much, not gonna lie. So, now they got 30,000 units and 2,000 in reserve. I think I'm gonna be uh, going to war with them after I finish my wars here, because I'm obviously not able to take anything from Lithuania. I'm just gonna piece them out right here with uh, the Casio, and I'm gonna bring my troopers back to get ready for the Muscovite War. Considering the recent buffs to Plutocratic, I highly recommend you go for Plutocratic ideas as your first idea set, since it both offers a lot of military bonuses like the mercenary bonuses, morale of armies, manpower recovery speed, as well as it offers playing toll stuff like caravan power, dev cost reduction, goods produced plus 10, one extra merchant. I cannot take the full amount of money that I want from the uh, Livonians, but I'm going for this deal because I don't want to waste any more of my time and attrition more of my units. Instead, I can use this time for better things like, you know, destroying the Muscovites. If I manage to attack them before they uh, finish coring all of this stuff up, that's a bonus because that's gonna make it more annoying since I'm gonna occupy these areas so the coring is not gonna increase even though they did start coring it and they're basically gonna die off to overextension after. Setting up Ruzev as our target and let's go with the Worski. I'm gonna split off half of these units here so I can kill off uh, Piskov's army early on and my main goal as I said before is gonna be to first off occupy these lands and of course do the same thing we did before wipe out the small armies whenever we see them. Ah yes the entirety of Musk of these forces are sieging down a single fort, attritioning to death in the process. Carpetius Sejicus Maximus Muscoviticus. Will our brave Rohirrim here destroy the Muscovite invaders? They definitely will. Let me just uh, double down on that by uh, sallying out as well to make sure we completely crush them and let's uh, chase them down. They did do a little bit of damage to us. They uh, sieged down the fortless areas, let's call them, but we'll take them back fairly quickly. And I think that was the last of their troops. They only have 8,000 units left. I guess this was uh, the great Carpetius Unsegius. We got enough war score to enforce our demands. 142, 125. That means we can get a little bit of cash. Not bad. Coalition Lithuania and Muscovy, but let's face it, we don't really care about either of these nations. And now we can also start focusing on rebuilding and fixing after the second war against the Muscovites. Plus, the best part is that we now border Riazan for future expansion in this area, as well as we border the Lithuanians through the province of Tupchev totally how that's pronounced so whenever we uh have our truce over with lithuania we can attack him for more lands in this area and uh perm is quite far away from the muscovites now and they're a little bit disloyal so i highly think that they will break away in an independence war that being said we got 98 overextension so we really need to focus on chilling improving our economy be aware when it comes to your fortification sometimes you might have way too many forts in one area without requiring to have that many forts there. So for me, for example, Lucky is not needed, nor is Latgalia needed, because both of these areas are protected by my newly added fort in Puskov. So by deleting those two fortifications, I gained two ducats flat. I'm gonna do the same with Reval, since this is a grasslands province, which is super easy to take, compared to like uh, forest, woods, mountains, highlands, and so on. We're also supporting the independence of uh, Sweden in the hopes that eventually they will decide to break away from the yoke of the Danes 
Reigns. They haven't done that yet, but fingers crossed they will. And I also just realized that uh, the Muscovites are now actually separated in three distinct areas. Four, if we include the Permlands. Totally was not my intention, I promise, okay? Let's also release our brand new Vasalsky here of uh, Polotsk. Polotsk is basically a precursor to Belorussia, modern Belorussia. And they have a lot of cores here so we can feed these boyos back after the truce is over with the Muscovites and the uh, Lithuanians. So we basically force spawned and killed off all of our rebels and we've centralized the country quite a little bit. Now we're actually making 15 ducats on the plus, that means our profit, and we're almost about to attack the Muscovites for another time. What is that, like the third already? Plus there's some interesting predicaments happening in the south as the Ottomans have have taken a big chunk of Lithuania so we might come into conflict with the Ottoman Empire as well so if you guys want to see a second part for this 10,000 likes and until the next time check out this awesome Teutonic Horde run and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support 